Zanayati and today I'm going to talk about an introduction to tires. As you probably know, tires have three main functions on your car. They support the vehicle and the loads and since they can roll, you can use them to go forward and backward. And also tires absorb the road irregularities and of course partially because suspension system is the main player for this issue. And also tires provide an interface for braking and steering and maneuvering on the road for your car. Now, before I go to technicals, let me to cast a background to the subject. Unlike the wheels that we cannot find any origin or inventor, there are some records for tires. I'll start with natural rubber. Natural rubber is extracted from a tree called Tivia brasiliensis, and it's extracted in the form of a milky substance called latex. Adding carbon black particles as a reinforcement agent turns color of this latex into black. But at the beginning of 1840s, British and American inventors Thomas Hancock and Charles Goodyear in two different researches found out that adding sulfur to this natural rubber can hugely improve its elasticity and this process is called vulcanization. And then in 1888, the Scottish inventor John Boyd Dunlop made the first pneumatic rubber tire for his child's tricycle using canvas and rubber. And less than one decade later, and in France, Michelin Brothers used the first pneumatic rubber tires on automobile. Now, let me to talk more scientific and give you some technical information that would be very useful for the following. I can say that there is no standard compound or defined production method for producing tires, but surely there are minimal requirements and specifications that manufacturers have to pass if they want to sell their products in each state. And for United States, these requirements and test procedures are presented in section 110 and 139 of part 571 of title 49 of CFR. A tire needs to have many properties at the same time and manufacturers must consider many parameters. For example, environment and regulations, wear rate, load capacity, weight, noise, rolling resistance, high speed performance, traction and handling on dry and wet surfaces and even aesthetics and many other properties and parameters that listing them here is out of your patience. But you just know that there are a lot and unfortunately going in favor of one can affect adversely others. Also, a modern tire is very complex in structure and has many components and each component itself is composed of many elements and ingredients and changing each component in its design and also in its composition and elements can affect the tire properties in negative or positive way. So you can understand that how much it is scientific and experience oriented designing a new tire for a specific application. Now we go to tire types. There are two major tire types in the market, bias and radial. Bias types are older and are divided into two types, belted and diagonal. I don't want to talk more about bias types here because they are mostly used on trucks, buses, road and farm machineries and aircrafts. But you just know that these tires have cores in their carcass or main body ply that are laid in bias or diagonal angles if you could see them through the tire from the side. These cores go from bit to bit and may there be many layers of them to give the tire that desired strength that is presented by load range, load index or pillar rating. Please note that the pillar rating that I said is just an index and number to present the strength of that tire and is not necessarily number of cores or layers of the plies for that tire. Now radial tires. Radial tires have cores in their carcass that are laid in radial direction if you could see them through the tire from the side. These tires introduced for the first time in Europe and in mid 1940s and their usage expanded in the world in 1970s and today about 95% of the tires used on passenger cars and light trucks are radial type. Radial tires have many advantages in comparison to bias types. They have better durability 
routine service and also they have lower roaring resistance that results in better fuel consumption and also they have better wear resistance on thread surface and also they have better stability and performance at high speed but these tires have a strong and boosted thread section design that make production of them very complex and costly and also they have a fairly harsh and bad riding on bad roads for the following please note that even though this video is about radial tires used on passenger cars and light trucks but many information that are presented are the same and applicable for the tires used on trucks buses and aircrafts however aircrafts have some special tires with special characteristics that maybe i record another video about them for those who are interesting in I hope that this video was useful and informative for you and worth the precious time that you spend for watching that. Please subscribe to my channel if you like and press the bell icon to be notified if I have a new video on my channel. Bye.